Hey friends, this is Quest and Current and what I have for you today are two cables made by the manufacturer Kabelkraft and one of them is actually advertised as not having any data connections at all and the other one is just called 200%. So let's first unpack them and then take a look. But before we're going to do that, I wrote the prices of the cables on the, on the back side because I was actually surprised even the, the cable without any data connections at all cost almost 15 euros and it even says here 100 watts privacy and security not sure what that means and the 200% cable that says USB 4.0 Gen 3 at the 240 watt maximum charging rate and 40 gigabits per second data transfer costs 34 euros and 25 cents excluding taxes and shipping so both of the cables together cost almost 60 euros um, to get delivered to my place, which was kind of surprising. But let's take a look at how they behave and if they're actually worth it. Let's first start with the oh, bit of dirt, okay. The node data cable, because that's the one I'm actually most interested in. And first look, the cable feels really nice. So it's a thicker cable, thicker than expected, um, even Though it has no data inside, it seems it has a lot of copper or um, whatever they use as a conductor. And it says no or no on the cable here. And the other one just says Kabelkraft or Cablecraft or whatever. So the cable itself, yeah, I mean it is one meter long. That, that seems plausible. Let's take a look at it and test it with the uh, Ely KVQ cable tester. So we actually know what's going on inside. Let's take a look here. Okay, so it actually is a 100 watt charging cable with a data speed of 0.00 gigabits per second. So they actually didn't lie in the advertisement. It actually is a data, um, no data at all cable, a charging only cable. And yes, no USB standards or anything else are supported, but the cable itself can do everything between 5 and 20 volts at currents of up to 5 amps. This also reflects in the USB connector pinout where we just have the ground and VBUS connections as well as the CC1 and CC2 for the power negotiations which are required for all cables that can deliver above 60 watts of power. This means that this cable too has an integrated circuit and so-called e-marker that can talk to this cable tester and your phone, laptop or charger uh, in order to tell them that this is actually a cable rated for 20 volts at 5 amps and therefore 100 watts of charging power. So if we take a look at the connected pins, it's obviously Weepers Ground CC1, CC2 as well as Shield. The Shield is really interesting because it's not needed um, in case of this cable because we, we don't actually have data so there is nothing that can be um, put in or out of the cable in, in terms of um, electromagnetic interferences. There are no available options and the VBUS resistance is at 62 milliohms, which is actually not that bad and what we would expect from a cable that can handle uh, 5 amps of current. Now the e-marker infos, that's where it gets interesting and <laughs> funnily enough it advertises itself as a USB 2.0 cable at a length of around 3 meters. This is interesting because the standard itself does not define an e-marker info where it says the cable itself does not have data at all. So it just advertises itself as the lowest data speed available, the USB 2.0. And the latency itself doesn't matter at all because there is never going to be any latency. So I'm not sure what they put in there, but um, due to some reason unknown to me, they said, okay, let's make it a three meter um, latency, even though it doesn't feature any data at all. The rest is pretty much correct. The current at 5 amps, the voltage is 20 volts. And the render ID is 2E87, which is really interesting because I don't know if the Kabelkraft, the manufacturer itself, actually has a USB render ID. So I'm definitely going to look that up in the app later on. Um, the rest is pretty straightforward. And we're going to leave that here and take a look at the 200% Das Kabel, uh, Kabelkraft and see if they actually have the uh, USB 4.0 Gen 3 at 240 watts charging power and 40 gigabits per second data rate. 
So if we take a look at the cable, it feels even thicker to be honest. It is, it is. So if we take a look at them next to each other, you can see that the 240 watt cable is even chunkier than the other one. So that's a really massive cable, but it still feels good. So they obviously have invested um, some time and effort into making it actually a decent cable. The strain relief itself is, is also working um, somewhat nicely. So even though the cable is as thick as this one, uh, it should not cause too many problems uh, with this one. The connectors themselves are quite similar to the other one. It just says 200% here in cable craft, cable craft, whatever. And <coughs> let's connect it to the tester and take a look what they, they advertise themselves to be. Okay, perfect. So it says a 250 watts charging power, so nominally 240 watts, but the cable is rated at 50 volts instead of the 48, so it's a theoretical limit of 250, and the data speed is 40 gigabits per second, whatever um, they claim to be is, is, is certainly true. Now, um, taking a look at the specs, obviously all the USB modes are available because it's basically the highest end cable you can buy right now as well as all the voltages, nominal 48, uh, theoretically 50 volts in currents up to 5 amps. Um, if we compare it to the other cable that only went up to 20 volts, um, this means that the other cable can do 100 watts, while this one can 240 or 250 watts. The USB connector now is fully populated, even though these two are missing. These are the D plus and D minus for the USB 2 standard. And that's because the USB-C connector is backwards compatible for USB adapters and there is only one pair of D plus and D minus connections made with every USB-C connector. So they are either the top two or the bottom two if you have the, the USB modes available. If you find, find a cable at any point in your life where both of them are connected, then that's actually not a good cable. It's actually not according to specifications and it may or may not work, most certainly it, it will work in a degraded state if you get it running in any way. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at the connected pins. Um, all of them are connected, um, that's what we expected. The rebirth resistance is, is a bit higher than with the other cable, which is interesting, so it's now at 71 milliohms. Still pretty much um, perfectly fine. Uh, we consider everything below uh, 125 milliohms to be, to be good or perfect. So this one is actually a bit higher, but, but still in the okay range. Now, <laughs> what, what can we see here? Interestingly enough, it, okay, now the USB 4 Gen 3, that's correct, that's what, what the packaging says, um, <coughs> is correct, and the latency is also correct. It says smaller than 10 nanoseconds, approximately one meter. The cable is exactly one meter, so that should be fine. But if we take a look at the vendor ID, now it's 315C, so even though both of the cables come from the same vendor and do have the same name printed on them. They do have a different vendor ID, which would indicate that this vendor actually buys them in bulk from, from a different supplier that actually puts in their, their own vendor ID. And, and therefore, depending on where they buy it from and, and, and where they rebrand it from, they come with a different vendor ID. So now we know what these two cables can do, but the question is, why would I buy a cable that can actually do 240 watts of power and um, USB version 4 uh, at 40 gigabits? And why would I buy a cable that cannot do data at all? Because on first glance, that would not be a useful cable at all. Because if you take a look at, at the specs of, of uh, wrong packaging of this cable, it even says instead of the, the USB versions and the, the data rate, it just says privacy and security and um, the charging rate. So they, they don't even have any specs to put in here besides um, some buzzwords. And these buzzwords are there for a reason. It's because you normally buy this cable if you want to charge your device um, in a public spot where you don't want actually any data to be transmitted. So for example, if I hop on the bus and I want to charge my phone and there is a USB-C connector on the bus and I want to charge it with that, I will use a cable like this because 
there have been drive-by attacks or um, specialized attacks where um, phones or other devices got hacked via um, USB connectors in public places because some phones, um, especially Android ones, are put in debug mode. Some phones do have vulnerabilities while connecting them uh, via USB. And all of them can be used if you have a steady data connection from the charger in the public space that you control to the device that actually someone else controls. And that's a really good argument for, for cables without um, data connections. And that's why they write privacy and security on it. You don't have to worry about anyone um, pulling photos, for example, of your phone, anyone putting on malware on your phone, or anyone trying to connect to your laptop via the USB, or anyone <coughs> trying to, for example, act as a USB keyboard um, if you connect your laptop to it and, and open a terminal and start writing commands. That could, could very well happen if you use a USB-C cable like this with data pins um, activated. And with this, even though the, the cable is a bit on the expensive side, um, it looks quite nice, it looks quite fine, and I would definitely recommend buying one and bringing one with you in case you, you use public transport or any other public charging station more often. With this, if you have any questions in mind, just put them in the comments below, and thanks for watching.